Today, inflation hotter than expected again. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, Wealth Nellie's Post, covering finance and problem news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, the Consumer Price Index, the CPI, rose 1.8% in the September 2022 quarter and reached 7.3% annually, according to the latest data from the ABS. Now, it was a broad-based upside surprise, especially in the core measures, highlighting accelerating inflationary pressures. And it means that the average working Australian on typically $90,900 a year would have needed an additional $6,637 a year in rising pay just to have kept pace with inflation over the past year. And of course, the annual inflation rate is way above the Reserve Bank's target of 2 to 3%, and that signals another rate rise next week. Now, the ABS said this quarter's increase matches that of the last two quarters and is lower than the 2.1% result in the March quarter this year. All three results exceeded any other quarterly results since the introduction of the goods and services tax and underlies the highest annual increase in the CPI since 1990. Goods accounted for a little over three quarters of the 7.3% rise in the CPI over the last year, reflecting high freight costs, supply constraints and prolonged elevated demand. The most significant contributors to the rise in the September quarter were new dwellings up 3.7%, gas up 10.9% and furniture up 6.6%. Labour shortages in the house construction industry leading to rises in labour costs contributed to the rise in new dwellings this quarter and the continuation of material shortages added further price pressures. However, the rate of price growth in new dwellings eased relative to recent quarters at 5.6% and 5.7% in June and March quarters respectively, reflecting a softening in new demand and some easing in supply constraints, they said. The rate of rental price growth in Sydney and Melbourne has increased this quarter following a period of subdued growth since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. This is the third consecutive quarter of rises for those two capital cities consistent with falling vacancy rates. Compared to Sydney and Melbourne, the remaining capital cities have recorded higher increases in rent prices, reflecting historically low vacancy rates. And the annual gas price reviews across the states and territories saw higher wholesale gas prices passed on to consumers in the September quarter. Electricity rose 3.2% this quarter, with rises across the country offset by the Western Australian government's $400 electricity credit and smaller credits offered by the Queensland and ACT governments. Excluding the effects of those schemes, electricity would have risen 15.6% in the quarter. Food was up 3.2%, and continue to rise, driven by meals out and takeaway foods up 2.9% due to higher ingredients, wages and transportation costs. Fruit was up 6.6% and vegetables up 2.9% over the quarter and continues to rise through the whole quarter, reflecting high input costs and weather damaged crops, although vegetable prices eased in the month of September. Partially offsetting the September quarter rise was automotive fuel, which was down 4.3%, which fell in all three months of the quarter, reflecting falling crude oil prices. Annually, the CPI rose 7.3% for new dwellings, up 20.7%, and automotive fuel up 18%. Those are the most significant contributors. For the second consecutive quarter, annual price inflation for new dwellings was the strongest recorded since the series commenced in 1999 as high material and labour costs mingled with high demand. Fewer grant payments from the federal government's home builder and similar state-based housing construction programmes compared to the same time last year also contributed to the annual increase. Excluding the impact of the reduction in grant payments made, new dwellings would have recorded an annual rise of 17.7%. 
the annual increase in the price of goods up 9.6% was the highest since 1983 and continued to rise more strongly than that of services up 4.1%. And the price of non-discretionary goods and services, those are the things you've got to buy, rose 8.4%, while those of discretionary goods and services rose just 5.5%. Across the states, Sydney recorded an annual rise of 7% and 2.3% over the last quarter, with electricity up 25.3%, new dwelling purchases by owner-occupiers up 3.3%, takeaway and fast foods up 4% and automotive fuel down 5.2%. Melbourne recorded an annual rise of 7.4% and 2.1% over the quarter, with new dwelling purchased by owner-occupiers up 4.2%, gas and other household fuels up 11%, electricity just up 8.9% and furniture up 8.7%. Up in Brisbane, well, Brisbane recorded an annual rise of 7.9% and up 1.8% over the quarter. New dwelling purchased by owner-occupiers was up 3.4%, Electricity was up 10.1%, and that was partially offset by the $175 cost of living rebate introduced by the Queensland Government from September. Domestic holiday travel and accommodation was up 6%, and rents were up 1.8%, and automotive fuels were down 5.1%. Adelaide recorded an annual rise of 8.4%, with 2.6% over the last quarter. New dwelling purchased by owner-occupiers were up 6.8%, Electricity was up 12.8%, gas and other household fuels up 17.5%, and automotive fuel down 6.4%. Perth recorded an annual rise of 6% and was down 0.5% on the quarter. Electricity was down 84.3% due to the $400 household electricity credit introduced by the Western Australian Government from July. Automotive fuel was down 5.8%. New dwelling purchased by owner-occupier was up 2.7%, and domestic holiday travel and accommodation was up 4.8%. Hobart recorded an annual rise of 8.6% and was up 2.3% over the quarter. New dwelling purchased by owner-occupiers was up 6.7%, electricity was up 12%, takeaway and fast foods up 3.2%, domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 2.4%, and Darwin recorded an annual rise of 7% and up 1.9% over the last quarter, with domestic holiday travel and accommodation up 17.6%, beer up 2.2%, takeaway and fast foods up 2.6%, and new dwellings purchased by owner-occupiers at 1.2%. And finally, Canberra recorded an annual rise of 6.9% and up 1.9% in the quarter, with new dwelling purchased by owner-occupiers up 2.4%, Domestic holiday travel and accommodation at 7.5%, furniture up 9.8%, and gas and other household fuels up 6.6%. Now, in line with the quarterly CPI, the monthly indicator also rose 7.3% in the 12 months of September, following annual rises of 6.9% in August and 7% in July. And the ABS said the largest contributors in the 12 months to September were new dwellings up 20% and automotive fuel up 10.1%. Food and non-alcoholic beverages inflation rose to 9.6% over the 12 months of September, up from 6.3% in June, and fruit and vegetables were up 17.4%, and that was the main contributor, and that was up from an annual rise of 9% in June. Now, underlying inflation measures reduce the impact of irregular or temporary price changes in the CPI, and for the second consecutive quarter, annual trimmed mean inflation was the highest since the series commenced in 2003, increasing to 6.1%, up from 4.9% in the June quarter. The surprise was a 1.8% increase in the core inflation in the last quarter, and that was driven by the broad-based nature of the inflationary pressure, as shown across the trimmed mean distribution. That was really much higher than normal. The lower trim started at 0.26% for clothing and accessories, and the upper trim started at 3.71%, which was furniture, with dwellings only just trimmed out at 3.72%. So you can see here that inflation is horribly embedded now, despite low wages growth. And, well, the thought 
that inflation is already knocking close to the 7.75% that was expected at the end of the year suggests we may overshoot the latest estimates in the budget released just yesterday. And it puts a greater imperative on the RBA to lift the cash rate for longer and also potentially harder. Inflation, as the Treasurer said the other day, needs to be stamped out because if it isn't stamped out, then those on lower incomes are the worst hit. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.